The AJS-37 is an advanced strike jet for Sweden and War Thunder. Let's check it out. The Saab Vigen, first introduced in the early 1970s, was produced in several versions over its lifetime performing dedicated roles. Some of these, like the JA-37 fighter version, were fairly straightforward, but there were also smaller production runs of niche versions for reconnaissance, anti-shipping, and interdiction, in addition to the original ground attack model. In the early 1990s, a program was funded to upgrade some of these smaller run niche models to a common standard capable of multi-role operations, which resulted in the AJS version. This was an upgrade to existing airframes, these were not newly built aircraft, and it included new electronics along with a more modular payload system and compatibility with a wider range of ordnance, including the AIM-120 AMRAM, so maybe we'll see that in the game someday. The main idea was that this unified version would allow each plane to be customized to a mission before flying out, instead of needing to pick a different airframe every time. Primary sources differ on the exact count, but at least 40 airframes in total were upgraded to the new standard, and they were finally retired in the mid-2000s. What we get in War Thunder is the AJS-37. This is a strike aircraft in rank 7 of the Swedish tech tree, with a battle rating of 11.3. Being a strike jet, the AJS-37 gets a fully featured ballistics computer with all the usual top tier features, but it lacks an EEGS. Its radar is the PS-37A, which is a fairly high performance radar set, with an all aspect look down mode, track wall scan, and an ACM boresight targeting mode. The loadouts on the plane are… difficult. You only get six pylons, and you have to choose between regular ordnance gun pods, or countermeasure pods, they're all carried externally. The lack of a built-in gun or built-in countermeasures really ends up crippling this plane, but more on that later. Also, the outer pylons can only take your rear aspect infrared missiles. Speaking of which, for air-to-air -air missiles, you start off with the RB-24J. This is basically an AIM-9P a medium-performance rear-aspect dogfighting missile that you're probably familiar with by now. You upgrade to the RB-74. This is a Swedish version of the AIM-9L, and it's really one of the best dogfighting missiles in the game, with 30 Gs of pull, an all-aspect seeker, and good tracking. For air-to-ground missiles, your first is the RB-05A. This is a manual command weapon with a good high-explosive warhead, but personally, I find manual command missiles incredibly difficult to use, especially at the top tier, but you might have better luck than I do. Your final missile is the RB-75. This is a Swedish version of the TV-guided Maverick anti-tank missile. It has a heat warhead with good penetration, and it's notable for its long range, but more on that thought later. Like other versions of the Vigan, the flight performance of the AGS-37 is outstanding. The jet has strong acceleration, good top-end speed, and it can pull off some incredibly tight high-energy turns. Now, the usual caveat supply that, like other Vigans, the plane dumps energy really fast in those hard turns, and it's a little heavy, so vertical maneuvers sometimes aren't the best idea. It's got reasonably effective air brakes, though, and its engine is really thirsty when you've got the afterburner going. But it can take a drop tank, and in testing, I really didn't have any fuel issues any time I flew out with the centerline drop tank on. Flying this jet out into air battles really feels like it's being held back by its weapon loadouts. In terms of air combat, you've got to sacrifice at least one pylon for countermeasures, because that's basically mandatory if you're going to try and dogfight. And your outer two pylons can't take your all-aspect missiles. Plus, if you want a gun, you have to give up another pylon. So for a realistic mission profile, you're flying out into top-tier air combat with only two all-aspect weapons and a fairly limited number of countermeasures. That's not great. And while the AJS has the flight performance for it, its weapon system just really holds it back. 
Furthermore, if you want to take it out for ground pounding, even a full bomb load isn't enough to take out a strategic base, and you have to give up a quarter of your bombs if you want to take countermeasures. Again, the loadout system just really cripples this thing in air battles. Now, in terms of close air support, there are some similar issues in terms of pylon usage to get the countermeasures and stuff, but there are other factors too. First, in order to get into this jet with any guided missiles, it takes an incredible amount of spawn points. But even if you do get out into battle with the RB-75s, you don't have any kind of targeting pot or anything. So finding things to attack in the anti-air environment over a top-tier ground battle can be really difficult and almost impossible at longer ranges, even though the missiles themselves have a good standoff distance. Now, in testing this jet for this review, I got out above a ground battle with the RB-75s about a dozen times or so, and almost every time I got wasted by the Panseer before I could even find a target, never mind get a shot off. And when I didn't, the match ended before I could get any kills. The lack of a targeting pod is the main issue, again, because even if you fly a super high altitude attack profile, which is basically the meta right now, you usually have to dive in a little bit to find anything to target using only the missile's camera. By which point, yeah. Now flying in and doing low altitude attacks with the rocket pods can work, but as usual, it's very high risk and it depends greatly on using map terrain features for cover, so be careful. Visually, it's another Vigan. It's a pretty decent looking jet, it's got a couple of custom skins, and at least one of them will probably suit your fancy. Landing this thing is identical to other Vigans, no caveats. It's got pretty tough landing gear and a thrust reverser, but no drag chute. Overall, relatively easy landing experience. The cockpit is pretty good. It's got decent all-around visibility, and I really like that moving map display. No radar scope and no radar warning receiver, but overall, it's still an okay cockpit. To close out on the AJS-37, this jet has amazing flight performance, and it can take TV-guided missiles for close air support. However, its quantity of weapons is just inadequate. It carries its countermeasures and guns on external pylons, and it doesn't get any kind of targeting pod or advanced optics. The final verdict on the AJS-37 is that this jet feels like it's a fish out of water. It gets sucked into top-tier BR-12 matches, where its limited weapons and lack of targeting optics seriously hold it back. It's incredibly difficult to be effective with this thing in the current meta as of mid-2023. Maybe someday it'll get those AMRAMs. As always, thanks for watching.